multi-stream. Let me open up the multi-stream window. So it is multi-streaming. All right. Let's see. We go on kick real quick. No, no rhyme intended. Uh, let's see. Hmm. I just got a fucking YouTube notification that we live. I know we live, my nigga. I'm the one that did it. Speaking of what you said the other day, we do got to get back to having, like, intro music and shit. Yeah. You know like, we losing some of our motherfucking spark. <laughs> nah, we going to get it right, though. Mm-hmm. Got to get the intro music and shit back bumping. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. Yeah, but you know, while we get in the while we warming up the warming up the stream, AdamEve.com promo code R R P O D. Go up there to get you something for you and your lover. Go up there and receive your 50% off almost everything in the online store. Actually, it's two free gifts. I went up there and looked not too long ago. It's two free gifts, and one of them is a lover's kit. Um, go up there and get your free and discreet shipping and go up there and get you something so you can have a good time. AdamEve.com, promo code R-R-P-O-D. All right, and the promotional arm, the promotional footage, get that out of the way, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The but shit, let's, let's, let's talk about it. I saw this post. And it was from a new movie titled Monkey Man, where I'm assuming the lead actor, Dev Patel, broke his hand, two toes, tore his shoulder, and got an eye infection while, while filming this movie. Man, that reminds, and, me of, um, that reminds me of the guy, I think his name is Jim Caviezel, that played Jesus mm-hmm. in Passion of the Christ. This nigga got struck by yeah. lightning like three times. Doing that, like as if you didn't have enough of a sign that you was fucking up, then getting struck by <laughs> lightning three times, the thing that's never supposed to strike in the same place twice. But anyway, anyway, go ahead, bro. Yeah, but and and it also got a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Let's watch the let's watch the trailer. I'm watching this shit on a big screen over here. I'm looking away, but I'm still here. But I'm looking over there. <laughs> Close your eyes and you will find yourself. Oh, shit. When I was a boy, my mother used to tell me a story of a demon king and his army. They brought fire and terror to the land. Oh, man. Until they face the protector of the people. The white monkey. There you are. You are a beast. In this city, the rich don't see us as people. Give me the job no one wants to do. I'll do it. Anyone who forgets their beliefs, it doesn't turn out well for them. This is not the place to work if you can't handle that sort of stuff. No, I have seen this trailer. I just didn't know it was called The Monkey Man. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen this shit. Big bumper. Nice headlights. Let's do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh yeah, this is this is right up my fucking alley. Yeah, this is fire.
Bruh. What your ass is trying to do? No wonder he broke his eye and shit, doing that bullshit. <laughs> nigga tried to jump through the window. This one of these do my own stunt ass niggas, man. Oh, uh, yeah. That's why he was in there breaking fucking hands and shit. Alright, well, you get the gist of it. I see why the nigga was in there breaking his hands and shit, breaking his arms and shit. But Oh fuck. Will that. I watch this? I'm Hell yeah. Shit out that movie. Yeah. Broken so, bones. I and all. to say I will watch it. Your broken this is some shit right up my alley. Cause in the beginning, I was thinking it was gonna be a little bit like Angbach, but it's it's looking to be a bit more like John Wick. I thought it when you said a fighting movie. I thought it was more like a uh, like a uh, martial arts or boxing movie or some shit like that. Like, That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Totally won't think it is, but shit, still this shit looks good. I'm definitely gonna watch this whenever I get the chance to. Haven't had but, a good old action romp in a long fucking time. Not a long time, bro. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? Shit, do you want to finish this trailer or you want to go ahead on and go to the next thing? Um, we can finish it. Fuck it. It's a trailer. Nobody better not get their panties Just in a bunch over a trailer. Can burn down everything. <laughs> They got the damn Jay Z joint in there, but it's so uh, distorted. Maybe the, uh, the, um, mm -hmm. the, the content ID shit won't catch it. Yeah. No, that's fire. Yeah. I'm gonna watch that shit. Good shit. I liked it. I'm gonna see that one. So I also came across a guy named Sheldon Johnson. He appeared on Joe Rogan and he I didn't even know he appeared on Joe Rogan. So this is all new to me. So this is this is just a little clip of him talking about prison reform on Joe Rogan. We had an understanding that you were going to pay. And when I came home, when I finally located this particular individual, he had his girlfriend with him. Well, um, he didn't really like talk about prison reform in this. He I talked did. about how he landed he, he in did. prison. Yeah, he didn't talk about prison reform. He talked about how he ended up in prison. And he talked about supposedly changing his life around after, the, you know. Supposedly and big and supposedly is the fucking key word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead on. You can you can pull him back up because it's a it's a. Yeah. Um, we was even, so I robbed him, and I took his jewelry, and his girlfriend happened to be there, and um, unfortunately she got caught up in the situation. I had a bunch of young guys with me. And they robbed her as well. Mm -hmm. And he got hit in the head with the gun right here on the side of his head. And he got two stitches. And they gave me 25 years for that case. Did you hit him in the head? No. One of the guys that I was with hit him in the head. You know, one of the things that's happened through all of our conversations that we've had on the show is it, it highlights how insanely broken the criminal justice system is. Broken. I mean, it's it's so broken and it seems so overwhelmed, and the root cause of it right. is never addressed. I mean, this is my my take on this whole "Make America Great Again" thing. You want to make America great again? Make it so there's less losers. Make it so that more people have a fucking chance. The idea that everyone starts on the same line. I mean, I'm not talking about equality of outcome. That's not possible. But equality of opportunity is possible. That's a possible goal. 
And at least we could advance that. At least we could do something to you know, just, just change the course of who knows how many people's lives. And we don't do a fucking no, just, thing just about Just change uh, I mean, the I, we'll course each other of because we just who had, knows we how just, many people's like, lives. Lunch before we came. It's like the precise conversation that we had. Um, I told you this is a motherfucker that gets it. Oh, I know. It just makes no sense to me. It, it makes no sense to me, and it's not a subject of any presidential <laughs> debates. It's not a subject of anybody who's running for Congress or running for Senate. We have to fix this. This is a problem that's been going on for decades and decades, back through Jim Crow, back on... I ain't gonna lie, bro. I fuck with that nigga Joe Rogan, and I know we had an episode talking about Joe Rogan was for fake intellectuals, but... I don't know. <laughs> I didn't at that at that time I didn't watch Joe Rogan videos, but bro, it was one point where I watched like fucking 10 Joe Rogan uh not of course not the fucking three hour shows, but I watched like it was like some 30 minute segments of them. I watched the hell out of them shits, but I fuck with Joe Rogan, bro. Oh, Joe Rogan, the Joe Rogan experience is actually fire. Yeah, and, and come on, like, look, to be fair to us, the Joe Rogan episode that we did, that wasn't really about the whole show being about fake intellectual, for fake intellectuals, that was just some hyperbole shit. The, the, it was mm-hmm. really about the nigga telling people to take horse tranquilizers to cure, to, to treat COVID. <laughs> that's what yeah. that's what it was that ivermectin shit like i ain't able to get into all of that like i just thought it was funny like the niggas telling people to take a horse medicine for that that shit was just funny like that's that's what it was it was fucking funny but i watched his um i watched his whole cat williams interview i tried to watch the other one with this sheldon johnson guy um couldn't find it. Just found a longer version of that clip right there that we just pulled up. The 14 minute version. But mm-hmm. speaking of Sheldon Johnson, speaking of the devil, speaking of the actual devil, let's fast fucking forward to, <laughs> to present time and see what old Sheldon has been up to. The suspect has been identified as Sheldon Johnson, a criminal justice activist who previously served time in prison. All right, Fox 5's Linda Schmidt live in the high bridge section of the Bronx tonight with more on this surprise. High bridge. Ain't that what, like, a boogie is from? Is it? Yeah, certainly surprising. Mm-hmm. First of all, this guy said he had turned his life around after spending most of his adult life in prison. In fact, just last year, he started working with the Queen's Public Defender's Office. Well, now he is accused of shooting a man in the head in the apartment building right here behind me and then dismembering his body. 48-year-old Sheldon Johnson of Harlem is charged with murder and concealment of a human corpse. This is Johnson recently on Joe Rogan's podcast talking about how he had turned his life around after a life of crime. He was working with troubled youth with the Queen's Public Defender's Office. The shirt he is wearing says Queen's Defenders. I got into school. I got my GED. Um, From there, I got involved in um, correspondence courses. I started interacting with guys who were teaching ART, aggression replacement training, and I started to begin to understand how these concepts work, what positive visualization is, um, deep breathing, how to remove yourself, conflict resolution. Well, police say Johnson's life of crime apparently was not over. He is accused of shooting 44-year-old Colin Small in the head in Small's sixth floor apartment. Bro, Apparently, not this open. motherfucker sh- talking all of that good shit again today. and is the was doing the shit like this. Of the Bronx, a law enforcement source telling me they found a man's torso and foot in a plastic storage bin. Investigators also found the victim's head, legs, and arms in Johnson's freezer in his apartment building in Harlem. The superintendent of the victim's apartment building saying a neighbor heard gunshots and surveillance video tells the story. The tenant of the apartment, he came in, he never came out. 
So I called police because it's su suspicious. The super providing me with these surveillance pictures inside the building that allegedly show Johnson carrying bags in and out of the apartment building the day of the murder and changing his clothes several times, as well as wearing disguises. Look, hold on, hold on. Now Pause the shit. Pause out to the Queens Bro. Defenders. The shit went from a serious story to damn near being like some Looney Tune shit when this nigga popped out with the same blonde wig Bugs Bunny used to wear when he was fucking with Elmer Fudd, bruh. Like, what is this nigga... <laughs> what is this guy thinking that he's actually doing? Did he there ain't think, no teller. Did he think he was... Blink being clever, my nigga? Did, did he think he was being clever? Did he think he was actually being inconspicuous? But he came in and out oh, the no. same building with 10 different outfits on the last time with a blonde wig. Mm -hmm. Bro, you would have been better off not to give murder tips out to people, but just wearing a black hoodie that, that was so deep that it encapsulated and encased your whole head so nobody could see the inside of it and wearing that the whole mm -hmm. time coming in and out. When you knew right. you was going to murder that nigga, you should have went in one disguise from the beginning to the end. And nobody would have knew mm -hmm. who the hell you was. But this is some, I mean, he he was the the expert at being in prison. Like Now he going to go the fuck back. Oh. Oh shit, bro! Did you freeze up? No, I'm here. No, but this damn shit be scaring me, bro. I be thinking shit is nah, yeah. crashed. But overall, this shit is a little strange, though. I don't, I don't know. He went up there talking about all this reform shit and turning his life around, and next thing you know, he's uh, convicted of killing and dismembering a man. Shit's just crazy. It, it get like that because, I mean, it is crazy. Not it get like that. It's crazy, but it's not surprising. Like I don't see. Yeah, nothing few, surprises me now. You, I, I be thinking that a lot of times the motherfuckers who actually go out there and talk crazy shit about their crimes. Mm -hmm. instead of being on this pseudo intellectual shit that Sheldon Johnson was on uh, aggression replacement therapy and all that nigga you should have did your breathing techniques before you went and, and crashed out and murdered somebody but like I, I, I seen this um interview with this dude named Nate Boone Craft have you seen that shit yeah 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 I know exactly who that is <laughs> he ain't been back to prison Man, he he talks openly about all the killings that he done did and the killing that he uh, was tempted to do not long ago, at least since he been out. Like he was he was tempted to kill somebody else. Like right now, mm -hmm. the um, it's a channel, the Art of Dialogue on YouTube, that they got like the most up to date interview with him. It's like three hours long. They they got really the best one that there is right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, like Nate Boo, Nate Crab, he ain't been back to prison, but he ain't out here trying to pretend like he's some fucking prison reform activist, bro. He just be like, yeah, in the eighties and seventies, I was murdering niggas. That's it. Nah, <laughs> and he'll definitely tell you that he he's fucked up from. All of the shit that didn't happen to him, like how his arm don't fucking hardly work, his yeah. fingers don't work. He got fucking yeah, this shit right here. He was saying he got fucking shot up. He got all type of wild shit. He got blasted. He got shot because the people who he was um, the people who he was in the gang with, like the hitman team he was on, the best friends. Mm -hmm. They tried to kill his ass. They tried to kill him too. Mm. They ended. They a lot of them backdoored each other. They hear him tell it, and they hear other people who was affi affiliated with them tell it. A lot of them backdoored each other. So 
and he was one of the mm -hmm. one of the attempted backdoor victims. He just so happened to survive it. Yeah, they they attempted to backdoor nah. him while they was on another hit, bro. Damn, like that's how that's how I mean to hear him tell the story, like and most of the people who he was talking about are are dead or locked up. So, mm -hmm. um, basically, his perspective is the only one that we got. Yeah, I mean, he was trying to back. Nah, but nonetheless, them too. that shit is crazy. He, he was he was trying to backdoor them too because they killed his little brother. But it's just it just goes to show you, bro. Like that shit right there ain't none of that bullshit worth it. All these niggas get put in jail. They get put under the jail, motherfucking. Uh, Big Meech had two hundred million dollars. He literally can't spend none of it. Niggas locked the mm -hmm. fuck up. Like, <laughs> nah, he gonna be able to spend that shit soon though. He get out twenty twenty five. Yeah, yeah, he will be able. He won't be able to spend none of that two hundred million. That shit gone. The feds then came and got that. He'd be able oh, to yeah. spend what he get now for his life story and all that. Yeah, he probably got some. He probably got a couple mil though. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. Oh, we moving over into that next? Yeah. Bruh. Bruh. This is that Hollywood. Oh, so you sent me you sent me this. So just just what what like what's up with this? This is Hollywood, bruh. Hollywood is <laughs> full of fucking weirdos, bruh. That's the that's the mm -hmm. That's the conclusion that you have to come to. Now, like, when you look at these people, when I look at these niggas, I'm thinking that all of them is on some freaked out, weird, crazy, ritual shit. Like, some some freakazoid shit? Bruh, who? This nigga made a meat platter that's made to look like Amy Winehouse after she done overdosed. And, and... hold on a second. Nah, but nonetheless, this shit is crazy. Um, because she was once she like in her fucking apartment and had and overdosed on some shit and got found days later. Well, I'm not sure. I think that's Let's what see. they. She got found in her apartment. My question is, how does nigga even know what the corpse looked like? <laughs> How? Shit. <laughs> Y'all know. Motherfuckers probably got some pictures of it knowing these guys. How they do that? How they know what the corpse look like, bro? Where they get that from? Neil Patrick Harris, man. He been a famous Hollywood stir since he was like twelve. Since he was like twelve years old, when he was playing Dookie Hauser, ain't no telling what happened to him out there. This ain't no conspiracy theory shit. It's verified, like that these niggas out here was doing weird shit to kids. It's verified. Ain't nobody guessing about that no more. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like so. What? Ain't no telling what type of indoctrination Neil Patrick Harris underwent. Shit, ain't no telling. But a a a meat platter Bruh, meant to resemble a corpse I, at a party? Nigga, I thought it was the corpse until I read the caption. I was like, what the fuck? Then I read the caption. This is like, would you even want to eat that shit once no. you got to the party? Nigga, and you I see a fucking a, a corpse, a corpse charcuterie board? Like, <laughs> like, nigga, what the fuck? You think I'd be within a hundred feet of a fucking party Neil Patrick Harris threw? <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> I ain't even. I'm just, nah, but this is some this is some tweak shit. I ain't never seen no shit like this before. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't indulge in a Neil Patrick Harris party. It wouldn't be my fucking scene. You feel me? Like, I yeah. wouldn't be there. 
he into some shit that I ain't into in the first place. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, but nonetheless, this is some tweak shit. I, I don't know why, how the nigga would. The platter was made out of beef ribs, pulled pork, chicken sausage, and a spicy barbecue sauce. Right. None of that shit looked like bull pork to be, or beef ribs, or barbecue sauce. Let me stop scrolling before some wild shit pop up and we get kicked off all these fucking <laughs> streaming platforms. Uh, we have to go to uh, Twitch. You can show your whole ass up there. We can go to them <laughs> and uh, pull them up and, and, and pull up wild shit over there. Uh, yeah, let's go to this next one, though. Kate Middleton's lawyer is suspecting that she's dead. And we got a we got a video here, and you were saying that you hadn't even heard about the Kate Middleton shit. I but I know her ass was missing, cause like I ain't kept up with no Kate Middleton. Well, we gotta say allegedly, cause we don't know. But it was some shit going on about a picture of her that was photoshopped. But we, we, what were you about to say? Let me be honest. Yeah, I know who Kate Middleton is. I know who she is. I ain't even mm-hmm. gonna fucking front. At the time when all of this shit broke out, I thought, for whatever reason, my mind just kept telling me she was a fucking actress. Like, right. I was like, and I that's what know. I thought she was. I knew she was like the Princess of Wales or married to one of those fucking goofy, like, you know, the cartoon, the, the cartoon parody of British people. That's what them British royal niggas look like. <laughs> <laughs> Like, if you pull up one of them caricatures with big-ass teeth, that's what the royals from Britain look like, bro. Like, they gotta mm-hmm. be royals, because how the hell this nigga Prince Harry or Prince William, whatever his name is, what's the one that's married to the black chick called? Shit, I don't know. He the most Prince normal, Harry? Whatever his name is. He the most normal-looking one of them niggas, but, like, if them niggas want royalty, bro, come on. Niggas ain't fucking with they bad dental health. <laughs> so anyway, you can continue. You can continue. Kate Middleton from one of her attorneys. This is from her lawyer Jeffrey. I believe she's unalive. Kate Middleton's lawyer confirms what no one knew until now. Now there's five. See, that's crazy that the lawyer's coming out and saying this shit. Around all the time, he said he's gonna be. That's the part, bro. It's the part that's trying to verify the shit. Not even me saying it now. I've been saying it. I've been. I do try to tell y'all, motherfuckers, but but nobody's gonna to listen her. to you because they think and you crazy. Basically, name dropped on Camille mm-hmm. Parker. She needs to be looked into. That's what. Anyway. Nah. <laughs> Ain't this what you were saying? <laughs> Yeah, look at them some not them some not normal looking motherfuckers yeah, look right there. Motherfuckers look like they've been alive for three hundred years, bro. <laughs> niggas is out here wearing skin costumes. That's what they look like. Look at them motherfuckers, bro. You already know that this picture. No, this is the picture. So this is the picture that they are saying is photoshopped, and you you told me that the shit was they came out and said it was photoshopped. Well, allegedly she said that. Allegedly she apologized for photoshopping it. Mm, So Kate Middleton did. Yeah, allegedly she did, but apparently the nigga who she married to was the one that actually did it. Pulling the picture down, they have. I don't know skill which one of them notice. weirdos she married to, bro. What was worded in the article? It said skill notice. Nah, and, they, and she was just gonna say, just ending it up that this picture was all on fucking the news channels talking about how it was a fucking a, a Photoshop. But yeah, K Middleton's Photoshop most glare Photoshop mistake. And this goes into like the fucking the zipper. It's like something up with the zipper, and then something up with like a blurred part of this knee of I mean, the little you, girl's you can't, knee. But. You can't count on me to detect photoshops. I don't know. Like, nah, for real. It gotta be I don't know. Something. And the only reason I know is because they fucking went in here and they was talking about it in these pictures. But I don't know though. What you what you think? You think this shit is some? 
some some wild shit or you think it's just a misunderstanding well ever since i was a kid bro it's been conspiracy theories that princess diana the other princess of wales the one the famous princess of wales got got knocked off too ever since i was a kid mm. it's been a it's been a rumor that she got actually killed like that shit like the mm-hmm. thing was cut the brake lines or something i don't know so I'm open to the conspiracy theory, man. I'm open to conspiracy theories, bro. Fuck it. Like, I, I used to think that niggas was crazy. Then the Me Too movement happened and, and pretty much confirmed that everything that people had been saying about Hollywood was real. Like, it just took the internet to be popular for it to be able to be, you know, for it to be able to be enforced because... Mm-hmm. Look, we ain't getting no money from these niggas, and I got they fucking logo all in the camera. Let me cover that shit up. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> it just took the internet to be popular for to be able to be enforced because without, because when 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 something catch fire on the internet, ain't no putting that shit out. You know I'm saying that fire is exactly. burning forever. But before mm-hmm. the internet was what it is now, the niggas who got targeted in the Me Too movement could stamp the story out. Before it ever happened, them same people own the fucking people, them same people who own the movie studios and shit. They own People Magazine. They own fucking entertainment. What is that shit? Whatever that entertainment magazine is. Uh, they own fucking uh, the, the National Enquirer and all the tabloids and all that bullshit. So, of course, they can they can control the narrative, but now they can't. So we figured out that that was real. So what's to say that the rest of this shit ain't real? We already see that these damn British royal niggas look like fucking vampires, bro. <laughs> Not vampires. Vampires Ram, is crazy. Ram Stoker looking ass niggas, bro. <laughs> nah, but I just find it weird that the lawyer is stepping up like, all right, some shit is wrong and y'all motherfuckers need to figure it out or we going to get to the bottom of it ourselves. But I don't, I don't find it weird because um, the lawyer, I mean, maybe he care about her, but I mean, she's that nigga's source of income. Like, Motherfucker. <laughs> Nah, you he not lying, though. Pounds, bro. He got to get the fucking pounds, nigga. Nah, you not lying. I didn't even look at it from that perspective, though. And, and, Damn. Yeah. That is that is where the money's coming from. And depending on what type of lawyer he is or what type of lawyer they are, if they like an estate lawyer, bro, her being dead is literally going to be his biggest payday. He needs to mm-hmm. confirm shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, maybe, maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Maybe I'm bullshitting. Maybe it's fake. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. They trying to get the clone together as we speak. But shit, what do I know? <laughs> the clone. <laughs> they could be. But yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? They could be. I would not doubt it. They did clone Tyrone, so they might clone this bitch too. They they cloned the fuck out of Tyrone, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm saying. So, you was telling me earlier that the Tate brothers got detained. They got clamped up. Mm-hmm. After eight like months. what? Do you do you know why? I don't know why, but it just happened right after Aiden Ross got on the stream talking about that the, the Andrew Tate was planning to flee Romania. Next thing you know, the motherfucking police were at his house. Mm-hmm. He should have died. Why the fuck is you going? My nigga. Why? Because Aiden Ross, if it was true that Andrew Tate told him that, and, and, and Aiden Ross literally wanted to, to suck Andrew Tate's nuts at one point, so maybe it is true. Um, he he mm-hmm. shaved his head bald. He said he was a Christian and all that, even though he's Jewish. Like <laughs> he did all that shit, but or Muslim or something. He 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 converted for for like three weeks. Um, but Aiden Ross got on this very website, Kick dot com, and said something about 
Andrew Tate fleeing, leaving Romania. And next thing you know, this nigga was locked up. Why? I don't know why Andrew Tate would tell him that. I don't know why Aiden Ross would talk about it. Right. He was like, because in, in, in the context of what it was, in the context, he was saying that he could come out to Romania, do a whole week of streams from Andrew Tate House, like to be the biggest shit ever. I mean, then Aiden Ross already get 100,000 views live. Like, mm -hmm. So he might even double, triple, quadruple that shit that he was doing a, a thing with Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate, for a while, was the most searched person on the whole internet. Like, mm -hmm. literally. So, the thing about it is, why the hell he need to come to Romania to do it? Why ain't you just escape first? And then talk about this shit with him. You could have done this shit from anywhere. Y'all could do it from Aiden Ross fucking house. And it's probably get a million live viewers. Mm -hmm. So why you even need it? I don't know, man. Like, Andrew Tate, the way he was telling Ryan Garcia he need to move carefully. He need to practice what he preach. Bro, right. you ain't fucking around with American jail, bro. You in the, you in the land where... Them niggas got the Gestapo. They can just show up at your crib and lock your ass up. Apparently, you forgot that that's what they've been doing to you. And of course, you know, the brain, the conspiracy angle back around. And they saying that Andrew Tate might even be down with the program. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, top G. And then the G in the Freemasons logo. I mean, even if he was a Freemason, I mean, at this point, bruh, what the fuck? It's regular Freemasons out here. Ain't yeah. I mean, there's regular Freemasons, but then, like, like I said, I had a, I don't, know if we, I don't even think we talked about this on the stream. I think we talked about it when we went in streaming, when I told you about the friend I had that was in the Masons. Uh, well, he, I, as far as I know, he's still in the Masons. Not, mm -hmm. Let me not say was. I don't want to. I mean, I ain't going to say his name in the first place, but he's still in the Masons as far as I know. And according to him, a lot of Masons, like, a lot of that conspiracy theory shit. I mean, according to him, and he was definitely a Mason. Like, had the license right. plate on his car, had the fucking uh, a chain. He had, he was definitely a real Mason. I seen the picture of him in the suit. With the little apron on with the uh, logo on it. The Freemason logo. The, what is that shit? The compass and the ruler? The square and the compass. That's what it's called. Mm -hmm. so he definitely wasn't faking it. Um, to the fact that... I ain't going to put his business out there. Even though I ain't saying his name, I ain't going to say all that. But um, that's besides the point. Uh, he said that... Number one, this conspiracy theory shit about the Masons was actually real. That's what he said to me. That's what he told me. And number right. two, he said that most Masons don't even know about it. That's what he said. And he started. And they don't know about what exactly? Like they, the theories? They don't know about the. They don't know about the. Um, the conspiracy, like, you know how, how, one of the conspiracies is that being a Freemason, like, Freemasonry is actually like a, a Luciferian re religion. That's what it's supposed mm -hmm. to be. Um, and that's why you supposedly see a lot of the Square and Compass logos got, like, sun rays coming off of them. But, like, if you see it a lot of times, it got, like, like that, and because Lucifer means like the bringer of light and shit, and they call themselves like the enlightened ones. They supposed to be like an offshoot of the Illuminati. Supposedly, I don't. That's what I mean. This is this is coming from the person I knew that was in the the, the this this a free base. Um, it was that most of the. Freemasons, that's because you got to get to a certain degree in it before you learn any of that stuff, according to him. 
You got to get past the third degree before you learn it, according to him. I don't know. Like, this ain't something I really think about on a routine basis because I ain't really never had no bad interactions with Masons. But I have right. seen people that have had bad interactions with Masons, bro. I have seen people who got fucking threatened by the niggas. Like, online. Like, they was threatening. A, matter of fact, <laughs> A famous person that that my that my uh, mom know, a famous singer was getting threatened by them niggas like ten years ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know why? I can't remember what she said about it, but I rem- I saw the threats. I saw them because because they was um my mama and her was DMing back and forth on Twitter, and the lady was sending them to her. Right, lady like was sitting her the post. I saw that shit with my own two eyes. So yeah, mm. I don't remember. I don't remember why though. This is a long ass time ago. I don't remember why the threats is happening, but I remember that they did happen. Shit, even if Andrew Tate was a Freemason, I mean, does the shit even matter for real? I mean, because then the implication if he was actually a Freemason would be that all of this. Shit about him going in and out of jail is all bullshit and it's for show. Right. That's what it would that's what the implication would be if he was actually a Mason. Like if you go down the conspiracy theory road with it anyway, like I don't really know. Like I don't really know. I know that you got niggas who t- I know that you done I done heard the stories like we all have if you into if you explore any conspiracy theories that Niggas going to the prison or going to court for some shit. The judge is a mason. And then next thing you know, they find out the person that's before the judge, the person that's supposed to be getting some type of discipline is also a mason. And next thing you know, the niggas charges get dropped and all of that. You know, you done heard those. Those is the cliche stories about how the the mason brotherhood works. But I haven't. Mm -hmm. I personally, and I have ran into quite a few Masons. I haven't had a bad interaction with them. I only had one weird interaction with a Mason before, and it wasn't me having the interaction. So let me not even say that. I was a right. witness to a strange interaction with a Mason. Mm-hmm. And this is before I knew what a Mason was. Right. right. So um, it, was a, it, was, it was a minute ago. Good minute ago. Me, my cousin Darian, and my cousin Darian best friend at the time. I can't even remember that little nigga's name. We was at my cousin Darian house when he stayed across from Crabtree Mall, but mm-hmm. and his best friend, big brother, was a crip, bro. And this is what made me oblivious. His best friend, Big Brother, not only was he a crip, that nigga was a fucking fearless crip. That nigga was a a maniac. Do you understand me? Up here. (laughs) He was doing shit that I was like, bro, you just want to go to jail, don't you? Mm Mm-hmm. So this dude pulled up, and he had the Freemason shirt on. And, and, And since... The dude brother was a crip. I thought the G on it stood for gang unit, bro. Is that this Mm -hmm. time, this was a minute ago. At this time, gangs around here was running fucking rampant. I mean, that shit was really out here. It was really like that over here, bro. (laughs) And you already know. Right. So that's what I thought. I thought it was a gang unit dude. And he came up there, asked for that nigga by name. He was like, where is this nigga at? I was like, bro, I don't know where he's at. We was like, we don't know. We ain't seen him. We ain't seen him all day. He was in his house hiding. It was like, he gave mm-hmm. us a card and shit. Said, you see him? Give me a call. It's like, all right. After he fucked off, the dude brother came back outside. And that nigga, the first time I ever seen this nigga scared, bro. You can ask Darian. If Darian mind ain't so cooked up on all the weed he done smoked since then, that he forgot this shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
But you can ask him. We was out there. That nigga was looking the the fear in his eyes, and he said, "Yo, don't 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 you ever believe nothing that nigga right there say." I was like, "Uh, okay." He a, he a cop. <laughs> I was like, he in, he in a gang unit or something? He said, oh, no, just don't worry about it. Just don't ever believe nothing that nigga right there say. And then that nigga ran back in the house. And that was the last time I saw that nigga that day, bro. <laughs> like, and and then I really, I, um, I connected it back to that guy being a mason when I realized what that symbol mean. Mm -hmm. I saw that because that symbol right there it was what was on his shirt right there. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that nigga was running from a Freemason. What the fuck he do? <laughs> nah, for real. But I, and me personally, I ain't never had any bad interactions with him, so I don't throw the... I don't throw the crazy conspiracy theory thing out there about the Masons all too often. But Right. I have seen some wild shit, that thing that I was just talking about, and I had an actual Mason tell me that wild shit goes on. Like, like I had that happen. Mm -hmm. like, so, that's it. Yeah. Nah, that shit get crazy. Mm -hmm. But shit, next, speaking of Masons, you was telling me about this earlier too. Right. One of the one of the um gang leaders in Haiti, Jimmy Scherzier. Barbecue. Also known by Barbecue. Supposedly, he got on a Freemason symbol necklace right now. He's supposedly a cannibal at that. <laughs> yeah, most of those most of those like leaders are cannibals. You remember that nigga General Butt Naked? He was I, a cannibal. I remember him, yeah. I knew I knew he was a cannibal. He was in Africa though. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in Africa. But he was he was similar in, to what well damn, can I even say that? Is he similar to what this guy is? General Butt Naked, he was a general. This nigga right here is a gang leader. That General Butt Naked dude was in the army over there in whatever country he was in. This dude is trying to overthrow the fucking regime right here. This dude mm -hmm. right here is trying to take over the country and, and do a hostile takeover and seize power, bro. Like, if he if mm -hmm. he uh, succeed in what he doing, he going to literally be the dictator over there, dog. <laughs> That's what's yep. going to happen. Like, he done told the damn, the, uh, the, the, whatever the dude is, the prime minister, like, if you, if you show your face around here, I'm going to clap your ass. So, he, mm -hmm. he done told him straight up, like. You so, think he will? Yes. No doubt in my mind that he will. You know what I'm saying? You think he going you think he going to take over? Oh, no. I don't know if he going to take over or not. It's looking like he got a good chance to. But then again, like if Nick. you if you take it back to the other angle, it'll be it'll be expressed that him taking over was all a part of the plan. You feel me? Like <laughs> Mm -hmm. You bring it back because I haven't heard too much. I've saw some of the Haiti stuff, but I'm just getting caught up really on the Haiti stuff. I haven't seen much for real. Yeah, I um, I just seen this guy like, and I seen when I seen this fucking guy, I was more like interested in. This nigga's backstory, and I was gonna watch a documentary about him, but I got sidetracked at work, so I couldn't do it at the time. So like, I wanted to see, I wanted to see what he been up to, and like, but apparently yeah. right now what he's up to is taking over a whole country. That's what he's up to. <laughs> exactly, and when you find that shit, send that to me. But all right, so we coming up to what. The show is really what we kind of want to focus on for the last few minutes. And that's this list of people right here that have participated in the humiliation ritual. John Cena, Jimmy Fallon, Kevin Hart, Tom Hanks, P. Diddy, Will Ferrell, 
Jared Leto, Pete Davidson, Michael Strahan, Zach Efron, Kid Cuddy, Kurt Cobain, Jaden Smith, Arsenio Hall, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Dustin Hoffman, Tyler Perry, David Bowie, and more. So how do you feel about these guys that are wearing dresses or even what we just seen on the Oscars? which we will get into soon. Uh, like, do you, because it's starting to really make me un- feel like this humiliation ritual shit is real. Well, I won't, it's a difference with like niggas like David Bowie. That's literally how that nigga was for his whole career. He started out that way. Like, mm-hmm. so, I don't know if it was a humiliation ritual or publicity stunt or he was just funny like that with with mm-hmm. David Bowie and I'm Kurt Cobain was like a heroin addict, so it was no matter I mean, there's no telling what he was about to do. So I kinda can discount those two. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But some of these other people who started out like who started out when they when they career started to blossom with no signs of shit like this. And then after they start making the, the super millions, they had to do it. Like as much as people want to say about Michael Jackson, he ain't never put no motherfucking dress on, bro. Yeah. He was saying he was weird, he was gay, he was a child molester and all of that, which you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's some uh, it's some things about that allegation that you know what I'm saying that is weird. Really. It's things about that allegation that's weird. He was doing some strange shit. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna take away from that. Yeah, he was like, he he was doing some, but he, he I don't know if he gonna he was molesting anybody. Let me put it that way. Mm. Um, right here, here's Kurt. Yeah. And there's Kurt. And Kid Cuddy kind of got the same kind of dress as Kurt, though, but yeah. He said that it was an homage to Kurt, to Kurt Cobain. And well, then they go, your boy. Yeah, look at this man. That's, that's your boy right there. And then, now that I see Kurt Cobain, like, because I ain't even seen him. Like, I know that the famous dress shot that he had where he was performing in the dress and fucking up the words to Teen Spirit on purpose. So like yeah. I remember, I know that one. But now that I done seen the damn other shots, hell, he might have went through the humiliation ritual too. Mm-hmm. And it ain't even just wearing dresses. Like that's the most egregious one. But think about it, bro. Think about it. Think about Kanye West wanted to be a fashion designer so bad, and he got stonewalled at every turn. Had mm-hmm. whole albums and shit. Jesus is about half of that album is about people not wanting him to be a fashion designer. Yeah. New slaves ain't no black empowerment shit. That's about him not being able to make his clothing line. Mm-hmm. Doing clothes and then they say I need help and I couldn't unless I pick that cotton myself. And all uh what's the other shit? Black skinhead, that's all about him. And then next thing you know, he was riding in that limo. My, Kanye, look, my leather black jeans on. Kanye West, a nigga who, um, Kanye West, a person, but let, let, that's how David Bowie was his whole career, bro. He was doing it from Life on Mars, which came out in the damn 60s. He was doing weirdo shit. Um, but, but Kanye West, a person who will flip the fuck out if you got a camera in his face. You know what I'm saying? A person who has always been prone to flip out if you filming him and shit. He is letting somebody film him, hand feed some weird bowl cut motherfucker. Fashion designer. And next thing you know, the Yeezy line take off into the stratosphere. And literally people are shooting each other over them like they fucking Jordans. People is 
uh, uh, doing raffles and all that shit to get that bullshit. He got he worth seven billion dollars after that. But before that, before he got literally that, before he was hand feeding that damn weirdo, he couldn't even get nobody to let him be in the fashion industry. And all of a sudden, he the one of the biggest fashion designers out. <laughs> Got like direct nah, lines. You can't like, even find that picture no more. Bro, right, that was a. Uh, I'm gonna I'm find that video of that nigga eating mac. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Look at this shit. Eating mac and cheese out of Kanye hands, bro. Look at this shit. So this is what really happens with Peter, Av, <laughs> Kanye. What we do on our way to a Vogue event. Ribs and french fries. Yeah. Look at this nigga. Look, re replay so this it one what more really time. Happens with Peter, look at how, Kanye. Look at, look at him. Look at his fucking face, bro. Look at his face. This is humiliation ritual if I ever have seen it. If I ever have seen it, that's humility. That's pure fucking degrading, bro. That's pure. That's pure. You a lower fucking entity than me, my nigga. I'm above you. Hold my food. What we do on our way to a hold my fucking ribs and potato souffle, nigga. On the way to a fucking Vogue event that was probably packed with fucking weirdos. You understand me? A Vogue event. Oh shit, event? just so. And then, of course, the Oscars. This quick clip. Had this nigga John Cena up there naked. That man right there. That man right there below him, he told y'all ass. The, the TV game with he the told y'all ass. Superb drama, yeah. We ain't seen that nigga since. A superb drama <laughs> about the importance of dignity and doing the right thing, made by a company that runs sweatshops in China. So, well, you say you're woke, but the companies you work for, I mean, unbelievable. Apple, Amazon, Disney. If ISIS started a streaming service, you'd call your agent, wouldn't you? Yeah, so pause that before the, the copyright tonight. police pop out on us. <laughs> Get excommunicated. Yeah, but needless to say, there's some strange shit going on in Hollywood. And I think we all, if you watched the Oscars, I didn't. But if you watched it, you saw a piece of the humiliation ritual. And also... In the um, Nick Staninsky, the new movie on Netflix, or it's on Prime I think Video. It might be Netflix. Yeah, Prime Video, the new Josh Hair movie. He dresses up like a woman in that too. So a fucking nigga who he started his career off por portraying the hip hop culture, bro. Got a fucking rap song he entered the ring to. You can't see me yeah. making rap albums and now he wearing dresses. But that shit done permeated hip hop too. And if you want to be a man, like if you want to be a real person, you know what I'm saying? That's in the world, that's done decided that that's how you want to live your life. Like if you a trans person or a cross dresser or a person that's really in that life, this is not, I'm not directing this shit at you. These, I'm t these is motherfuckers that's appropriating y'all culture. They ain't have to go through not one struggle y'all had to go through. A person that really want to live about that life and go out in public like that despite what might happen Bro. to them. And it's crazy. This is the cover. They have them dressed up like that on the cover. Yo. This is the cover of the movie. <laughs> And but, this is literally no, because I've I've been like nah, I, I ain't gonna lie, I fell asleep on it, bro. I watched the first thirty minutes of this movie. Swear, probably forty first. He down, he it, down bro. on his knees, bro. This scene, this scene with him dressed up like that is literally fifteen fucking seconds. 
When I say 15 seconds, the shit is literally him walking down off the stage. He got on the phone and then it goes to the next. For this to be on the fucking front of the nah. This shit is crazy. You you know This shit you, is crazy. I I promise you, bro. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm about to make a prediction. Looking at this right now, my big screen is over here. That's why I'm looking over here, pointing over here. But looking at this shit, looking at that. I bet you this nigga's about to replace The Rock as the biggest star in Hollywood, bro. You think so? I I think so. The Rock did this same shit, and next thing you know, he was in so much shit that I didn't. This nigga was in fifteen Fast and the Furious movies. This nigga was he he's in Jungle. What is it, Jumanji? But literally, him. You can't triple. You can't watch nothing on TV without seeing him or Kevin Hart. Mm -hmm. You see him and Kevin Hart in a movie together, and then on another station, you see them two niggas in a different movie together. Like, I better look, and maybe I'm wrong, but I think John Cena is about to become the nigga in Hollywood that's getting all them action roles. I know he was getting roles before. Like, we ain't gonna pretend like John Cena ain't, ain't a mega star, because he is. But. Bruh, The Rock was the poster child for Hollywood for like eight years, nigga. The fucking mm -hmm. Fast and the Furious franchise literally got resurrected when that nigga joined it. They took the yeah. movies from being about cars and circled the movies around his rivalry with Vin Diesel. Mm -hmm. Like, and they shit ain't even about cars no more. And about racing. Shit is about fucking saving the world at this point. Niggas was in outer space and shit. Niggas might as well have laser beam eyes in those stupid ass movies. <laughs> but nah, uh, and it was crazy because I was looking for a picture of them like in this scene. And I just happened to look at the fucking actual front pic, like the picture. But I'm going to finish watching this movie because the movie's not bad. The movie's good. So. And that's the thing, bro. When you when you realize this shit, to be to be away from it, you literally have to pretty much cut off your whole entertainment source because it's gonna be in everything. Yeah, it's in video games, bro. It's in video games. It's not just men. They don't just do this shit to men. They do it to women too. Look at The Last of Us Part Two. Where they put literally made Abby a man with a woman's head. <laughs> like, they made her a man body with a woman head stuck on top of it. And now, yeah, I know that women bodybuilders exist. When does the fuck does somebody have time to be bodybuilding in the zombie apocalypse? They don't. Mm -hmm. my nigga. They don't. <laughs> they do this shit. You talking about this character? Yeah, Abby. Played. I never even played the, Ab oh, the last one. I, I didn't play two. that bullshit. You know, I hated the first one. And then, you know, I didn't play that shit. You know, you beat my copy of The Last of Us before I did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. Motherfucker look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, bro. But, nah, yeah, this is probably the best one right here. That's what I'm saying, like, and that's a that's to a lesser extent because this is a fictional character, brother. Like, this is somebody, but this is a real woman's face, though. It's not like yeah, definitely a real woman's face. Yeah, but but it's a fictional character, but like, so it's to a, to a bit of a lesser extent, but just to put it out, like, Professor Griff said it. Years ago, people called his ass crazy, said he was disgruntled because he got kicked out of public enemy. But they kept bringing him back. I wonder why. Because <laughs> they probably didn't really want to kick him out. And they fucking record label probably told him he had to go. 
And he said, if you mm-hmm. when you get to start making certain amounts of money, when you get to be one of them people that's making twenty million dollars for a movie, you gotta do that shit. Let's not forget. We do we do we remember? Do we forget? It's another humiliation ritual, nigga, that happened. Shout out to the guys podcast. We talked about the movie series when I was up there with y'all. Mm-hmm. Another humiliation ritual happened, and next thing you know, this nigga was doing a movie series called Rush I was getting twenty five million dollars a pop. Mm-hmm. But hey, you, I know y'all seen the Fifth Element with Chris Tucker running around dressed up with lipstick and shit on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> lipstick, a dress. Man, he was in Rush Hour right after that. Literally, right after that. Yep. Come on. And this shit been there in front of us like we just didn't nearly know what to look at it or see and call it. But to see this shit and then next thing you know you see these motherfuckers getting put in the mega franchises, bro. Mega franchises. Rush Hour, bro. If they put another Rush Hour out right now, that should have make a billion damn dollars. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> and one ain't. I definitely out. believe that one. Is, bro. How many years have it been since Rush Hour 3 came out? Shit. At least, I'd say at least eight years. If not more. Because I had um, Rush Hour 3. Rush Hour 3, 2007. Was there, has there been a fourth one? Mm-mm. Nope. There's only three. It's, it's, three was the last one. They they making a fourth one right now. Oh, shit. Yep. That's fire. Rush Hour 4, as of uh, 2023, Rush Hour 4 is still in the early stages of development. Jackie Chan is confirmed. Jackie Chan confirmed in late 2022 that he and Chris Tucker um, had been looking for a good script for the fourth film. So they making that shit. Mm-hmm. That's these, fire. These niggas get tied to these forever franchises, bro. Like, after doing shit like this. And it ain't shit. You couldn't have looked at me and told me that you thought that Chris Tucker was going to be this after he was smoky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nobody ain't think that. And Chasing that money. Have you noticed? I don't want to shame it because it's a good podcast, so I ain't trying to shame it. Like, And they a million times bigger than us. Probably, have you noticed that Ever since Nori said what he said, you know what I'm saying? On Vlad, like, he said you have to walk through the door, right? Mm-hmm. But you notice that when he got the podcast, he ain't never bring up no shit like that on it. The Drink Champs. Yeah. You ain't heard that nigga talk about that type of stuff on the Drink Champs. Mm-hmm. The door that he was talking about and the world he was came from is the door to P. Diddy bedroom. That's the door you had to walk through in his world. <laughs> you think he don't walk through P. Diddy bedroom? No. Nori, Nori's career fell off too fast. I don't think Nori did any of that shit. Nori was literally... People look at him. I was there. I was fucking there. Nori was the hottest nigga out. He was one of the top five hottest niggas out when he mm-hmm. came out, bro. When he released that Super Thug shit, how the fuck, bro? Like Super one Nori's album, Nori's uh single Super Thug is one of the singles that blew Pharrell up. Look at right. where Pharrell is at now. That was one of the singles that got Pharrell. That's the sound that you hear from the Neptunes that permeated all the way through to the clips to all that shit started on super thug like mm-hmm. that's that signature neptune sound so nori was literally one of the hottest niggas out right like, 
literally. So he um play play a play a bit of that shit. Play a bit of it, you. You can stop it now. That's enough. You hear the Neptune nah, sound all definitely. over. Definitely, you hear the Neptune. You hear the Neptune sound in that shit, though. He was literally one of the hottest niggas. That shit right there was everywhere. And all it was was him waiting for Capone to come out of jail and they were supposed to take over the rap game. Like they mm -hmm. were niggas was waiting for Capone to come home so they could do another CNN album and that shit was supposed to take over the rap game, bro. And it didn't happen. Because I think he said what he said what he said. He got offered the door and I think he turned it down. Mm -hmm. it did. Mm -hmm. Bro, when I was younger... I thought that his album, God, his single, the single Nothing from his album, God's Favorite, the shit that's in Def Jam Vendetta, that, uh, that song was so big, I thought that album sold like 8 million copies when I was young. Bro, that right. shit, I don't even know if that shit is gold. Which album is it? It's God, it's called God's Favorite. But the song is called Nothing That What You Want To Do. Nigga, nothing. Oh, like, yeah. That shit. That shit that's in Def Jam Vendetta. That shit was literally... You couldn't go five seconds without hearing that shit. I don't know if the album is gold, bro. Nah, that shit ain't even gold. But that damn single was literally all over the place. And I think he turned down the fuckery, bro. I think he turned it down. I don't think he did it. That's why he gonna go down more known as a podcaster. Mm-hmm. But ain't Drink Champs on Revolt? Oh, no. <laughs> Bruh, ain't Drink Champs on Revolt. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even tell you. I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it ain't. But I do know this. I don't think Nori did it. I don't think Fat Joe did it. Like I don't think they took I don't think they took the deal. I don't think 50 Cent did it. No. 50 Cent career do I. his his career declined too fast, bro. Mm -hmm. 50 Cent was a bigger rapper than Drake. At his peak, Drake ain't never had an album that sold as many copies as Get Rich or Die Trying. He just hasn't. Get Rich or Die Trying sold like 12, 13 million. But his shit didn't sustain. His shit only lasted for two albums and then it was gone. It lasted for Get Rich or Die Trying and then it was... Uh, what's the other one? The Massacre. Mm -hmm. No matter what I feel about the albums, the numbers don't lie. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I know this shit is super platinum. Bro, it's got to be. It's probably more than that right now. It's probably more than 9 million by right. now. With streaming? Hell, Drake been out with the streaming era and ain't sold nine million. I think his most mm -hmm. shit is uh what is it? Five or six million. And right. this is the guy that's the biggest guy, bro. And this is the big this is the top guy right now. No, but that's crazy though. So fifty career fell off too quick. I don't think he took it. No. Uh, the, the guy that got like 14 or 15 number one albums in a row. I don't know what his ass did. <laughs> 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 I don't know. <laughs> you got to know who I'm talking about.
Bro, is this uh, R. Kelly? Yeah, that was R. Kelly. I was just seeing what these shits was going. R. Kelly got like a diamond album. Uh, one that's close to being diamond. Ludacris, Ludacris but, has got millions uh, out there, but he ain't got like... I think he got. I think he, uh, what's that one called? Word of Mouth is his best selling album. I think that might have went triple. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, but um, that's the thing, bro. Like, it's it's. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna slander nobody, but you see career trajectories, my nigga. Like you see them. You see shit shoot up into the stratosphere out of nowhere. Bro, 50 Cent ass was grinding for years before he took off. Nigga was rapping for since like right. 1996. Nigga, he had been like in the game for like seven years before his career took off. He ain't just step into that and then get handed in the club. That ain't how it happened. It seemed mm -hmm. like that's how it happened because nobody heard of him until he got shot. But he was out there. He had a, uh, a deal with Columbia Records for the Power of the Dollar album. The Columbia Records yeah. he sold 5,000 copies. But and all, I've been, I actually read his book, so I knew about the the deal he had before the um, the Shady deal. It was the Columbia deal. He had he had a single. This is how you know fit. This is how you know Fifty didn't take it. His first fucking single was with Beyonce. And they shelved the mm. fucking shit. His first mm -hmm. single was with Destiny's Child, my nigga. Mm -hmm. And they shelved it. <laughs> so yeah, I don't think 50 was up to it. I think Ross took it though. And I'm going to end it on that. <laughs> with that being said, AdamEve.com promo code RRPOD. Go up there and get your free indiscreet shipping go up there and get your 50 percent off almost everything in the online store go up there and get your lover's kit as well as your other free gifts and go up there and get your six free videos at adameve.com promo code r r p o t both rosses <laughs> <laughs>